Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Doesn't help. And we know this, right? We know this. If I go, hey, don't stress. You're like, oh, no, I'm stressed, but not feeling oh, stressed. Your, I get it. But rather than telling yourself like what a not to do, dog. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to Henna McNeely with her video 5 mistakes you are making on a vegan diet. For people that don't know, I was a vegan for four years straight. I tried every dietary vegan approach there is, no matter if it is fruitarianism, raw veganism, a whole food plant-based diet, the daily dozen, and the nutritarian diet by Dr. Joel Furman. On top of that, I'm a personal trainer. I come from a bodybuilding background. Therefore, I tracked all my macros, tracked all my micros, and supplemented with every single supplement under the sun. But I guess I still did it wrong. Let's see what Hannah has to say. Hello everyone and welcome Hello. back to my channel. My name That's is Hannah McNeely voice. and I teach people how mm. to go vegan and make it a sustainable lifestyle and have some fun while you're doing it and not make it so <laughs> yeah. stressful, which I know it can be if you're transitioning for the first time. I no, that's not true. If you're transitioning for the very first time, it's actually fun. You think you found the holy grail. You're experimenting with different foods. It gets very, very stressful once the deficiencies kick in. I've been vegan since 2006 with some ups and some downs in the beginning and now and some cheat meals <laughs> i'm just absolutely obsessed with this lifestyle and i've dedicated my time to sharing about it online and i'm just really grateful for it every day because it has transformed my life and i can't imagine who I would be or where I would be if I weren't vegan. Let's who you would be, you would be still you, but probably a lot healthier. Let's start, let's just jump right in. Let's do five mistakes you're making on a vegan diet. I okay. think this is, this will probably touch some buttons and you know what, if it does, that's okay. I'm okay with it. Leave your comment, I can handle it. <laughs> let's voice. start with the number one. First mistake is trying to be <sighs> perfect. I see this all the time, this was me for sure, and this can look so many different ways so let's address something first perfection does not exist anywhere in anyone in anything just in God and it is such a freeing thought to know that perfection isn't even an attainable goal <laughs> at all so let's address uh, perfection and just like the okay 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 slow it down so if you're talking about perfection and you become obsessed of course you could say that that is a compulsive disorder how Ever. If we're talking about food, we're talking about a species-specific diet. It doesn't have to be perfect, it has to be simple and true. If we look at a cow, we feed the cow grass and the cow is healthy. Done deal. If we look at a tiger or a lion, they eat raw meat. Done deal. If we look at the human being, oh, we don't have to be perfect. Let's just chuck in 12 different plant foods every day and see what happens. Passionate ethical side sure. of veganism first. We can do our best but perfection isn't the goal. Veganism isn't even the goal because people think my veganism is just like this perfect sort of idyllic or idealistic life or lifestyle or this wow. ide idealistic pursuit. And the truth- How many coffees did you drink before recording this video? The truth is, I love the way Colleen Patrick Goudreau says it. She's my girl. She is, she has been such an influential figure, vegan figure in my life. And she's an amazing podcast. You should check her out. Compassion is the goal. Veganism is just how we get there. And it's just a means. <laughs> and all we're doing is just redirecting, recalibrating every day towards compassion. So what that means is- So what that means is you can cheat a little bit. This is what I hear. Cannot live Honestly. this perfect life where we cause no harm to anyone or any creature ever. Gotcha. It just doesn't happen. And often perfectionism is what stops us from starting in the- The only way to be a successful long-term vegan is by eating eggs first place so if you're trying to Pretty go vegan much. but you're just worried that you're not perfect like well i would go vegan except for i have dinner with my grandmother every tuesday and she makes me chicken parmesan well why don't you go vegan except for every tuesday 
just an idea. And then a big she one can. is just like perfectionism in diet and nutrition. A perfect diet does not exist. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> There's no such thing. It's so extremely Even, ridiculous. She is justifying her own cheating and mark my words, pretty soon she's gonna come out as an ex-vegan. Right, that I promote and I eat. Um, I'm, I, I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty clear. Like I'm not promoting like one specific way of eating because there is no perfect diet for everyone, right? Like we're just trying to eliminate harm from animals and guess what? Our health- Is there a perfect diet for cows? Is there a perfect diet for lions? Yet again, do you then think that there is no perfect diet for humans? Benefits Why from do it too, and not to mention the it's environment. Strange, huh? The perfectionism in diet can be, can cause just so much unnecessary heartache when it comes to knowing what to eat, which is why I talk about this a lot in my Vegan for Good course. Knowing what to eat is huge. I mean, Vegan. we do have to educate ourselves on nutrition, inform ourselves what it means to eat well, what are whole foods, how do we balance our, our plate. Nutritional science can be incredibly conflicting and confusing, and so there is an element of having to inform yourselves a uh, bit. Wow, that. this video makes me nauseous, man. I cannot listen to this woman. Yes, nutritional science can be confusing to many people. This is why not everybody is a nutritional scientist. However, if you look into rural areas and how those people eat, you see that they're all eating a bunch of animal foods. More most of the time as well in their raw unprocessed state. Believe it or not, you don't need a doctor's degree to eat nutritious. You know how to eat well. However, However, don't be perfect. Like there's, you just can't be and there's no need and I actually find there's a lot more benefit into being a bit more relaxed about diet and you know, just achieving perfectionism. <laughs> Uh, I have been there. That's why I'm laughing. I have been there. Believe me. And okay, so why don't you tell us how you eat now? What I'm actually going to ask you to do, and I know you're going to hate me for this, is just to look for inward that. for a second, because I have learned so much about perfectionism in myself and in how this was affecting so many areas of my life, mainly sleep. I was really struggling with sleep and I didn't realize it's because I had a self-worth issue. I thought that I had to be perfect in order to be valuable. And okay, self-worth issue. Many people Check. don't realize that they Eating have disorder. a self-worth issue and they're using perfectionism uh, as a way to cope with um, Cope, cope, cope. It's literally the blind leading the blind. Why would you learn from this person? You know, a self-worth issue that they've been struggling with their whole lives and maybe haven't realized. So I would look inward do some processing, do some self-analysis, and why am I obsessed with perfection? And so even fake. if you don't see yourself as a perfectionist, take stock. A perfectionist doesn't necessarily mean you're a neat freak or that you want things to be in a nice, oh, can tidy we move row. On, please? It could just mean that you think you have to, you know, do all the chores perfectly and make your bed and everything has to be perfect and you have to follow this thing. And if you aren't, you know, doing all your healthy habits every day, then all of a sudden you aren't worthy. Man, this point is so useless. I know thousands of ex-vegans and every single one had a different approach to their diet. Nevertheless, the outcome is the same. They all fail. What? Mistake number Perfection. two, not continually educating yourself and informing yourself on what's going <laughs> on in the world related to veganism. So this and that is a direct contradiction to the first point. So you don't want to be a perfect but you have to update your knowledge consistently in order to cope with your vegan diet. Newsflash, lady, you don't have to do that if you're eating steak. The environment, nutrition, wow, man. animals, ethics, all of that. All of that. And the reason is manifold. First of all, <laughs> there are so many exciting things happening in plant-based nutrition. And <laughs> the ex-vegans, the anti-vegans out there are Hello. very loud on the internet. I don't know if you've noticed, they're in my comment section. <laughs> And if you are uninformed in my about uh, what's going on in scientific research and nutritional science wow. and the hierarchy of research and- A Woman, yet again, you're debunking yourself. The hierarchy of evidence, scientific research. You just said that nutritional science is complicated and that you shouldn't be a perfectionist about it. Aren't just a <laughs> like have a basic understanding and now you have of the what's basic going on by listening to the credible people, not anonymous randos in the Listen comments to the authorities. And you're going to be easily swayed and you're going to be confused <laughs> and you're going to second guess your whole lifestyle decision. Not hey, to no. mention, you are going to 
lose your vigor, lose your passion that you oh. once had when you went vegan initially. Continue to surround yourself with those free podcast interviews with continue to grind it out no matter how much you're suffering it's doctors who are so <laughs> passionate and knowledgeable Passion. and credible about this lifestyle and rational and reasonable rational, you know someone can be yeah. passionate as well rational. as calm and steadfast and uh thinking about things reasonably and not just as so emotionally and when we surround ourselves with those yeah. uh, podcast interviews, you know, every day, every week, listening to them or books, if you're more of a reader, we are constantly going to be. So essentially every single time when you feel that there is something wrong with your diet, you're going to listen to podcasts and brainwash yourself right back into veganism. Minded of why sure. we are vegan and why this is the optimal diet for our health. We live I, in this. I don't feel good, but it's optimal world that doesn't openly support our vegan lifestyle. Let's be honest honest with ourselves <laughs> whether we're at Oppressed. the gas station and there's like this snickers display right there you're at your family event and everyone's trying to get you to eat the egg salad whatever it is we chose this sort of alternative lifestyle and this religion. i personally feel very convicted in it and i'm sure you do too or you at one time did and we have to remind ourselves of why we're doing this like especially go back to the animal footage i know it's really hard to watch but it is essential to watch that stuff it is exactly it's essential i was brave was like that myself at the four year mark of veganism i couldn't take it anymore i was running to the toilet 16 times per day i was depressed anxious my teeth were rotting and then the only way to pull myself back into veganism was by watching those documentaries over and over again earthlings dominion and what not but guess what in the end not even those documentaries made me stay vegan just look at joey carbstrom man he has those empty eyes looking at the slaughter footage not feeling anything essential to know if you've lost that passion go back to the animal footage go yes. back to seeing what Just is actually happening when you pay someone to kill animals Mistake number three, <sighs> just stress yourself. around food. A lot of people go vegan and there's this sort of stress. Isn't that what you just talked about in point number one? And there's this sort of stress around what I eat, around diet. This kind of goes back to the perfectionism thing. Yeah, but bear with me for a second. It does. Understandably, in the beginning, there's going to be a lot of sort of obsession about what we're eating because it's an entirely mm. new shift going from eating the standard way, so hard to uh, watch. the status quo, to all of a sudden you're eating you're taking the animal foods off your plate and you're sort of confused about what to eat and you're like fiddling with things and you can't figure it out. Fiddle. But at some point, once you've got it figured out, you really gotta, st you gotta stop stressing about food. I would argue for the entire transition, we shouldn't be stressing about food, but um, I think that requires quite a bit of guidance and some, <laughs> some hand-holding. Stressing about food uh, is- But why is nobody stressing when they go on a carnivore diet? They're just eating steaks, eggs, some other meat cuts, maybe some fish. Why is there no stress? It's so the opposite of what we wanna do. What we wanna do is eat our food with joy, eat our food with uh, delight, and enjoy, truly enjoy what we're eating at every meal. I think- uh, Yeah, but how will you enjoy a kale salad? Especially when it's people impossible. go vegan for health reasons, and they start to learn about plant-based nutrition, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of fear about foods, and then the fear kind of, gets into, you know, fear about fats and fear about oils and fear about processed foods and fear about all these things. And the truth is fear is not sustainable. Fear can- Okay, so the truth is you should eat plant oils and sugar? Pay you, sure. But wow. it's not gonna keep you going in a joyful and loving, energetic, vitality infused way. Fear is Plenty of words and stressful. And guess what? It ain't good for your body. When you're stressed, <laughs> I, can't, I don't need to go into it, right? We know how harmful stress is to our body. So why are we stressing about food? Relax. Not only can a fear-based diet situation or a stressful diet situation create disordered eating, which you is seem totally relaxed conversation. Um, I'm getting an anxiety attack listening to you. It's also going to disrupt any peace that you might have in your gut and microbiome, especially at meal times. But right, especially at meal times. It's not the plants that disrupt your biome. No, no, no. It's the stress. Also, throughout the day, stress uh, only causes. It's not the jab. It's infant mortality syndrome. Is 
more more harm <laughs> to be honest yeah. stress doesn't help and we know this right we know this if i go hey don't stress you're like oh no i'm stressed but not feeling oh, stressed i get it but rather than telling yourself it's like what a not to do dog. focus on what oh, to so do much. such as feel joy enjoy my day laugh with my friends live with purpose in my life because all your subconscious knows when you say don't stress your subconscious doesn't hear the word don't. It just hears the word stress. Yeah, and so yeah, it's yeah, gonna... yeah, yeah. It's so hilarious to see that vegans always have to reaffirm what they should feel. Why don't you feel good in the first place? That is the real question. If you would eat your speed-specific diet, you would be relaxed. Start focusing on stress, 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 and it starts finding stress. Rather replace that with do joy today. Let's do joy. Let's do happiness. There's already a sign of severe mental illness if you have to tell yourself that you have to be joyful. You either are joyful or you're not. If you look at a dog, for example, the dog is joyful until the dog gets sick. Why would you think that depression is not sickness within your body? Peace. So a lot of people go vegan, they're feeling stressed, they're feeling confused. The transition can be a challenge for some, especially if they're doing it sort of like piecemealing advice and like uh, not finding like true guidance from an expert. And, and, and I get it, it's this expert. huge adjustment to your life. The but then you're inadvertently causing harm to your health because of the stress. It's so weird. <laughs> and and it can start affecting the quality of your sleep. And we know how important sleep is. Good quality sleep. Okay, so here's the, here's the solution. Yeah, here's the solution. If you eat nourishing foods, you will have great sleep. Be easy on Fixed. yourself. Zoom out. And just see yourself spinning on this blue dot. Which is such a miracle, by the way. <laughs> you know, life is a miracle. And you have this incredible privilege to choose White to privilege. eat plants ex exclusively. Not everyone has that privilege. <laughs> you have this wonderful ah, privilege. Yes, it's a privilege to malnourish yourself. Privilege to do that. <laughs> you have Zoom the privilege out. to eat the slave diet. See that perspective <laughs> and feel grateful. Oh, thank Gratitude you. is thank you, Lord. everything. If you are feeling grateful in the moment, just just watch your stress melt away. Yeah. <laughs> Man, this is so insane, dude. If you eat, again, your species-specific diet, animals that have been given to us by God, you will feel grateful automatically because you feel the nourishment. Just try it out. Go to a sushi buffet and see how grateful you will feel afterwards. This is, of course, absolute insanity. Nobody would feel grateful after eating a bunch of beans. You will get digestive up upset you will fart a lot nothing to be grateful about especially if you're in the beginning stages of being vegan beginning. that's why you found this video you're like what are the mistakes that i'm making and you start feeling stressed about the mistakes you're making maybe your transition was a little too abrupt and maybe you should have eased into it a little bit more i know that it's especially oh. important for someone who's like dealing with gut issues uh <laughs> easing into a plant-based diet is the best way why? to give yourself give yourself that fortitude and give yourself that time to adjust I'll but if the vegan diet is perfectly healthy for us then if we would start eating it our gut issues should just vanish why doesn't that happen so if you're feeling stressed because you're like what why? the f do i eat for plant-based nutrition get some guidance from an expert get some uh, get <laughs> some books get some podcasts and start informing yourself rather than just sort of i can see she you lost know, meandering podcasts. your way through okay mistake number Four, this okay. is for vegans in all stages, isolating yourself from friends and family. This one might be a little controversial, might step on some uh. toes. This is my personal opinion from my personal experience. Holy moly, guys, stop being so freaking judgmental and high and mighty. You are not better than anyone because you're choosing a vegan lifestyle, okay? Remember where you were before you went You're vegan. You're definitely not better, no. always think this way. M almost none of us were raised vegan. It's pretty rare to find someone who's raised vegan and continued conviction in that life. Yeah, why is that so? Hmm. Style. So now that you've, you know, made this amazing change to your life and you've amazing. experienced all these huge benefits, you know, in your mental Which? state, in your health, everything, it is oh. not your place to judge. <laughs> and it is not your place to pull away from your family. I know some people really struggle with, you know, 
communing together when there's body products on the table. I get it. It's uncomfortable for me too. Body Personally, products. I have made the choice to still eat with my family when there are body products, body uh, parts <laughs> and animal products, you know, body parts Vegan and things that are in those bodies. Folk. That's really what it is. It's gross, right? It's on the sure. table. It's sad. I don't like it, but I think it's more important to show love and acceptance to everyone. That is what it means to be vegan, right? To show compassion to everyone rather than, you know, making Shortness. myself out to be this sort of like perfect uh, royal creature who uh, does better than everyone, like so judgmental, right? Listen, I think there is something to say. There is very important to find your tribe. It's important to find those other vegans and connect. <laughs> it's just easier sometimes, you know, when you- It's quite interesting that there is not one single vegan tribe out there, right? Are all on the same page, whether it's about veganism, politics, religion, it is easier when you have your little groups and you can talk about things and you connect. But your family is your family, okay? Don't let veganism disrupt what you have and with your friends too. I know it's hard. I have been there, really. Like I have had struggles with some of my loved ones, Struggle. but it was me. It was me sort of pushing them away. It was me not exercising. At least you realize and that. The reason was when I first became an ethical vegan, it's like this veil was lifted and I was like, what? I just had no idea what was going on with the animals. And it felt like my whole world just flipped inside out and I was angry and I was going through all these emotions. And therefore it was a struggle with some relationships for a couple of years. I really encourage you to keep Keep those bonds, okay? Uh -huh. You know, work on those okay. relationships and work on yourself and you are not better than them just because you're vegan. Solution, be lighthearted, be confident. Be very confident in who you are and your lifestyle choices. But be joyful and be accepting. Yeah, yet humble. again, Mistake absolutely ridiculous. If you are confident, guess what? You would be confident. If you're not confident, you have to tell yourself that you are confident. You're playing make-believe. Unfortunately, fake it until you make it doesn't work here because you have a biochemical issue because you're eating only plants. It is eliminating all of these other yeah. plant food groups permanently. Now, this is a gut health one. First what? and foremost, Foremost, I really encourage you to check out Dr. Will Bolsowitz. He wrote Bolsowitz. the book Fiber, Fuel, Fiber Fueled, and then he just <laughs> Fiber Fueled. The book, the Fiber <laughs> wow, those vegans come up with one ridiculous name after the other: Nutritarian, Daily Dozen, Fiber Fueled, Carb Strong, and what not. It is ridiculous. Fiber is not essential. Fiber is not a nutrient. Fiber doesn't provide energy even. Why would you call yourself fiber fueled? Fueled cookbook, Maybe fiber which is food. so much more than just a cookbook. This is all <laughs> about gut issues. If you are experiencing gut issues at all. Ah, uh, you vegans love studies. So just look into studies and how fiber interferes with your digestion. If you have digestive issues, it's a great idea to remove fiber. These books. The second one, the one that just came out in particular, is really specifically guiding you through food intolerances and how to build your gut and strengthen your gut. Listen, your gut is really, this is what I've learned from Dr. Bolsowitz, okay? It's, it, your gut is like a muscle. If you decide that you want to uh, lift 300 pounds, you're not going to go to the gym and lift 300 pounds immediately. You're going to slowly build up to it. The same is with your gut and fiber. <laughs> fiber is so essential for your, the health Absolutely of your Absolutely essential. Yet again, for the last time, I'm going to bring you the example of the cow. I should call this video the cow. The cow doesn't need to build up her gut in order to digest grass. However, if you want to fatten up a cow and introduce corn, which is not part of the natural diet of that cow, then yes, you have to slowly introduce it. However, shortly after, you kill that cow so you cannot see the long-term side effects. In humans, we can. Since the agricultural revolution, we see all of those modern day diseases. Why? And if you all of a sudden start eating this amazing plant-based diet, and you're just loading up on the kale and all of a sudden you're like, I, just, I do not do well on fiber. It's because you need to build the strength of your gut. Another wonderful <laughs> analogy that Dr. B has given is imagine you hurt your knee. You have two options. You uh -huh. can either stop walking so that you don't feel the pain in your knee, 
or you can slowly rehab the knee so that you can start walking again. The stopping yeah. walking is analogous to permanently taking out the foods that you think are causing you harm or you can slowly incorporate the foods back in to build the strength up and start walking again, which is analogous to eating an abundant plant-based lifestyle. Abundant lifestyle. All right, let me give you an analogy. I'm standing in front of a wall, a concrete wall, and I'm banging my head against it. So now it's bleeding. Should I stop? Permanently eliminating giant food groups like grains and beans. This, this is detrimental to our health because our gut depends on all of the different kinds of fiber that it is that are available to us. <laughs> our gut depends on grains. In the plant world. <laughs> because many people have food intolerances, sometimes temporary elimination wow, of man. those foods is necessary. That's amazing. And it just, we just have to know that it's necessary and you can bring it back in. And that is what the Fiber Fueled Cookbook is all about. Dr. B is amazing. I highly recommend his books. But yeah, I think a lot of people go vegan and they start just like eating this like really extreme diet where they're eliminating all this. I, I was there, I experimented, trust me, I was there. But uh, now I'm eating in such an abundant way and it- How do you eat? So much just better. Just tell us. <laughs> I'm so glad I can eat bread. <laughs> all right guys, and this is it. My head is spinning. The video is long enough. The screeching voice was absolutely unbelievable. I think that was the longest time that I ever listened to a woman. If you like the video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much. All right, I'm going to eat 10 steaks now. Thank you very much. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.